This project started with the print of Eros, or Eros, I don't know how you say it, which is a real life ancient Roman statue. I stumbled across a group called Scan the World that 3D scans ancient art and artifacts and uploads STL files to mymanyfactory.com that you can just download for free and print at whatever size you want. And they're mostly Creative Commons license, which is amazing for us. This was a huge revelation for me. These ancient pieces are fantastic to use as the basis for all sorts of builds, and it seems to be a pretty untapped resource. Now, I'm sure other people have been doing this for a while, but I haven't specifically seen this group mentioned before, which means it's being underutilized. Personally, I have all sorts of ideas and certain styles of builds that I'm chasing. One major drawback for me is that I'm simply not skilled enough to hand sculpt or even 3D model some of the elements that I always want to use or at least I haven't been willing to dedicate the effort to learning those particular skills. But once I have that foundation in place, that inspirational starting point for a project, I find the rest just comes really easy, really naturally. And even aspects of a build that I'd otherwise think I wasn't capable of, I suddenly feel like I can do. One aspect to miniatures, especially custom ones that is really important, is the silhouette. I think a lot of people, including myself, get stuck building things at a micro level rather than a macro level. They forget to zoom out. If you're making a mashed up creation and you don't do every technique perfectly, say your joints are sloppy or sculpted parts not detailed enough, or your paint job is just mediocre, your piece will still end up looking really impressive if it has a really great silhouette. The reason these historical sculptures make the ideal starting point is that you can build off of an already beautiful form, a silhouette that was created by a true master. These ancient statues are often incredibly simple in form and not very detailed, but they're very captivating because so much is implied with the perfect placement and perspective of the subject matter. So this gives someone with a less of a masterful eye a lot of help in getting that really dynamic and emotive overall shape. I've spoken before about how magical I find the act of kit bashing, just like putting together different parts, finding the ways they naturally want to fit. And this was more true than ever on this project. What was different though was that base model. You know, it wasn't some GW model or a D&D mini or even a fabulous sculpt from some 3D printing Patreon. It was a simple human form sculpted by an unknown artist like 2000 years ago. This difference really changed the tone of the creative process for me. The fact that I was working off a piece that somebody probably spent many months carving centuries ago made me really respect the base model more than something, you know, like just released by a hobby company that they're trying to sell. I don't know the sculptor, not even in name, but working on top of their creation gave me a little connection to a mysterious person from the past. More importantly, it made me really think about each little piece I added. It's a common trap of kit bashing and building and mixing media to overdo things. To just slap a bunch of stuff together until it arguably looks cool. And I'm definitely guilty of that. But on this particular model, I felt both the need and the desire to be very considerate of every little tiny thing that I added. I didn't want a single bit added that would just make the piece worse. I didn't want to just keep putting stuff on top of other stuff until I kind of like something. I wanted each individual bit to have purpose, intent, and really add something. I wanted each element to seem as though it was truly meant to be there. I approached this with a modern day hobbyist's best intended version of that Roman sculptor's minimalist eye, or at least I tried. Hey, if you're watching my videos, there's a good chance that you're interested in learning new skills and trying your hand at different artistic ventures. Now, while channels like mine are a great place to do that, Skillshare offers a much more structured and ad-free environment with classes led by experts to help you grow whatever hobby or creative venture you're passionate about. There's a lot of subjects being taught there that are totally applicable to miniature hobbyists and even people world building and storytelling through tabletop RPGs. There's a bunch of classes on things like painting, drawing, design, writing, Editing, photography, video editing, you name it. Lincoln Michaels, for example, has a class called Science Fiction and Fantasy Creating Unique and Powerful Worlds, and it's a perfect example of a class that could be applied to those of us creating unique worlds for our friends and families to game in. At less than 10 bucks a month with an annual subscription, it's a great investment for creative people looking to refine their art. 
The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership. So you can explore your creativity. Even if you've already had a free trial of Skillshare in the past, you can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. I, I'm no Roman master, but I do think that being in this mind space led me down uh, you know, a good path that I'm often too rushed or chaotic to get into and appreciate. You know, maybe not rushed, that, that that's probably not the right reasoning. Maybe it's not even that I'm often too rushed to appreciate this approach. You know, I inherently gravitate towards minimalism in my personal taste when it comes to art, but often I don't execute minimalism in my own work. And if I'm being honest, this might be more out of insecurity than anything else. The less you do on something, the easier it is to see the flaws in what you've created. It's not as noticeable if things are subpar or sloppy if the overall piece is chaos incarnate. But if something is understated, containing few parts, and attempts elegance in some form, well, shortcomings and flaws become magnified. This little god of love made it so much easier to overcome this insecurity and hesitation than any other thing I've worked on previously. Now, it really isn't a very complicated construction. It has very few and very small elements added to it. But I feel like I was really successful in achieving my goal of everything in its place for a reason, everything adding to the whole, and most importantly, maintaining yet altering the original beautiful silhouette that I had started with. Through most of the build, this was simply gonna be another bit of terrain to add to my torment set, but the piece was different. This piece became important to me as I was building it. This wasn't terrain, it was art. Did I finally make art? <laughs> While singular and small, I felt like I was operating in somehow the same space, albeit at a lower level, as some of the artists that I admire most. For this reason, I opted to attach it to a simple, undecorated base. A base that would act as a frame for my creation, rather than a transition to a gaming table. Even when the tiny destined to fail little, you know, printed peg on the print uh, ended up breaking while priming, I wasn't upset. I didn't get frustrated. I, I love this piece and I saw it as an opportunity to make an improvement on it and give it that little bit of extra invisible attention that it deserved. I wanted to make sure this creation could stand proud on my shelf for many years to come. I really thought a lot about how I should paint this build. Instinct and habit wanted to lead me to a paint scheme similar to my previous works, but I knew that wasn't quite right here. I didn't want this to look like a rotting encrusted bit of metal strewn on a battlefield. I wanted to honor this bit of sculpture from antiquity by giving it a paint job that was more in line with what it may have looked like originally but with that modern twist of futurism. I wanted this to look as though the Roman Empire never fell, but existed thousands of years later, continuing certain artistic disciplines while mixing in modern day technology. I wanted this piece to look like a proper blend of machinery and stone, ancient and futuristic. I wanted it to look both beautiful and horrifying. I wanted it to look both elegant and brutalist. And I think I managed to achieve this and I was really happy about it. Of course, I didn't want things to be too clean. All of my artistic visions of imaginary worlds do include a certain darkness and grit. So this did require some weathering, but this is where my new friend, the oil wash is so perfectly suited. If I were to put on a typical acrylic wash, it would just muddy up the whole thing and make it look way too dirty. It might look cool, but it would look far messier than I would want. With oil, I could take that leap of faith and make it look absolutely slathered in grime and filth while confidently knowing that I could later clean it up and remove as much as I wanted until I got that right balance of grime and beauty that I was after. In this way, I got to almost feel like I was a restoration artist bringing an old painting back to life, and that was pretty fun. It's not uncommon for me to wax poetic uh, about the journey of a project and how it felt or what it made me think while I was doing it. And it's not uncommon for me to say something was a moving experience or that it changed me or my outlook on creation or the hobby. And I need to say it again here. That stuff's all true on this one, but this piece was special, truly special. And it was different. It was a process of love befitting the God Eros. 
I've slowly been working towards a goal as an artist that I haven't fully explained or really conceptualized yet myself, but I've begun to reveal more and more of it recently. I have a kind of vision of what I want to be making, at least some of the time on a personal level. I've had a lot of projects this year that have quickly got me closer to that end goal. But this piece, this piece in particular was the first one that was no longer sort of like a lead up or a transitional piece in a phase. This piece is the first of its kind. This piece is the beginning of a new era for myself as a creator. And I feel really exhilarated by it. And God damn, I feel proud of this one. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making this thing. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, there's a couple of really great ways you can do that. The easiest one is share this video with your friends. Make sure you're subscribed and um, yeah, just keep watching videos. Another great way is if you want to pick up some hobby supplies, order them online. You can do that through blackmagicraft.ca where I have my essential equipment page where I link and explain all the stuff that I use regularly. That helps the channel at no extra cost to you. The last and best way is by supporting the channel on Patreon. That support is crucial to keeping this channel going. I couldn't do it without everybody there. Thank you so much for all my current and past and future patrons. That's it for this week, guys. See you next week. Cheers.